and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode 25. As usual, we have a lot to get to today. So we're going to summon the War Council and then we're going to address some of our companions' concerns. We have yet to talk to Sarah about the march that we did and then a lot of our companions in our inner circle have got a lot of requests, you know. They've got a lot of things that they want us to do. Uh, we've got to bring Dorian to the Gull and Lantern. Uh, Bull wants to go to the Storm Coast. Um, Josephine wants to go to Valrio. There's, everyone wants me to take him everywhere. And taking out Venatory agents and Red Lyrium, and it's there's all it's all happening. It's all happening. There's just so much in Dragon Age to do. Um, and what better place to start than on the war table to check out what happened with these um, operations? Our first one here, the Thobal family is becoming a clear favorite in the War of Station that is ongoing between the noble houses. Uh, the Borderlands have all but ceased to exist socially and many are scrabbling for traditional alliances. Lady Eustace is, has emerged as a strong voice at court and is suggesting several arranged marriages to solidify ties and presumably the standing of her house as arbiter and matchmaker. Ah yes, arranged marriages. Love that. Oh my God, it just keeps going. The name of our enemy. Our agent, a mage named Sidoni, returned from Inratha successful in her task. She posed as a magister's assistant, bluffing her way into the magisterium's library to ostensibly perform research and managed to acquire not only the Liberalum, but also a number of other mystical tomes, all without leaving any evidence that traces back to the Inquisition. It may take Dorian some time to go through the Liberalum, but he is optimistic that something within will prove of use. Nice. We got a wave blade. Cool. And now, destroying Adamant Fortress. The Chargers were able to tear down what was left of Adamant Fortress. The demons could have been a problem, but the support forces Commander Cullen dispatched kept them off our backs quite nicely. With the extra time the Inquisition forces gave us, we were able to salvage a few interesting items from the wreckage of Adamant, including an old map of the surrounding area with Grey Warden supply uh, caches marked. Hopefully it comes in handy. Nice. We have the ability to claim some Grey Warden uh, caches and 60 influence. Nice. Okay. And we've got four. Uh, we've got the recent Evangeline one. I was going to have Liliana do this one. So we're going to send Liliana to do Let's that. See what we have. Because that was an older one. I'll make sure I we have a look at the ones that we have yet to complete that don't have notifications above them. Now, this one... There's hint of a Venatory Enclave, especially one supplying weapons. We need to crush it. The local landholders will get our scouts access. And then Leliana was also going to say select a group to observe. We don't want to alarm the Venatory. We know they're all too willing to sacrifice their captives. Now, I think I, this was another one I was going to send Leliana on. Um, but I, what I might do instead is we'll send Cullen on this one. We'll have him uh, crush the Venatory Enclave. Inquisitor. All right, sorry, just had my doorbell ring. All right, back into the, the next one that we have to do. So let's have a look. The ones that are in the dark are the, are the hardest ones to, to see. We might check over on Ferelden because we've got the Arles Invitation. Striking a bargain with merchant princes. That one might be good for Josephine to go on. Oh, and I forgot about the Venatory Hold once again. There's just, there's just too many. Too many. Um, let's have a look at striking a bargain with merchant princes. Uh, this is literally just for Josephine, so I'll, I'll do that. Inquisitor, the allied merchants of the monarchy of Antiva have inquired whether they can assist us in any fashion. They could provide us with some of the finest goods in Thetis, a powerful boost to our prestige, and spread our influence north. The merchant princes will also attempt to ensnare us in contracts so convoluted that we will be eternally tied to them. If we are interested, we must send our most skilled negotiators. Our diplomats are well respected, and I feel we can come out of it uh, ahead of the bargain if we are prepared to commit to it. A few dozen diplomats to handle the merchant princes. All right. Wow. Inquisitor. Done. Um, we'll check out the Venatory Hold. And maybe there's some judgment stuff as well as the Isles Invitation. 
is just a lot to do. <laughs> How to summarize the beginning of every Dragon Age Inquisition episode? There's a lot to do. A lot of war table operations um, and a lot of quests. Um, it's a pretty massive game, huh? Which is a bit, a bit of an understatement. <laughs> Pretty big game. Don't have the strength of treaties to judge a true grey warden. Heroes, then saved us all a while back. This is very interesting as well. I really like that uh, we get sort of ambient dialogue about who we've judged in the chair as well. We get the opinions of the people within the keep. Okay. Let's talk to Sarah about the march. How much does this suck? <laughs> like, skittish for days. What's up your the game did this intentionally. The game intentionally put that there for me to go all the way around. Still waiting to go get that reward for marching through Vachelle. Got something against free money? Oh, yeah, because we have to say, let's go now, don't we? That's why we didn't. That's why it's still a quest. Who's putting up the reward for this? Don't know. Sometimes it's past the hat. Sometimes it's I lifted this from Master's vault. Doesn't matter, does it? Job done. Time to get what we're owed. Okay. I'm ready if you are. Always, yeah. My favorite part this. Let's go see what friends can get us. Okay. So we're taking Sarah. Um Oh, wow. Cole's artwork changed as well because now he's more like a spirit and less like a human. That is so, so cool that like, depending on what happens with your characters, their artwork changes. That's just such a neat attention to detail that I really appreciate. Um, I don't know who to bring. I th <laughs> Should we just bring like Vivian? I want to bring like Vivian for a laugh because Sarah's got like, we're like, let's go get our Red Jenny rewards. And Vivian's like, I'm above this. And that's exactly why you're coming along. Um, and I'll bring a warrior. I guess we will bring Cassandra. Actually, let's bring the bull. Let's change it up. Let's bring the bull. All right, I guess we're leaving. Yeah, I thought that I'd forgotten to talk to her about the march, but then I've just remembered that it's just because we decided not to go yet. Wait, this is weird. What? I was expecting a village or something. The people that leave me stuff don't trek out to places like this. Give me a city and I'll give you a tour, but surprise, surprise, I don't know stupid woods or ruins. What's that? Don't hurt me. Harmond made me do it. Right, things have gone sour, as they do. No, no, it, it has to go right or he'll kill me for the marching. It wasn't my fault. You were the one with the rumor out of Vachel. My friend. You're her. You're the one he's waiting for. It's her. She's here. Red Jenny. Oh. Oh, shit. That's brutal. Okay. Well, it's it's definitely gone wrong. Check the pot. One down. Whoa, ho, ho, hold on. I was not aware the Inquisitor was personally involved. This is a tragic misunderstanding. Let's all sheathe our swords, you walk out, and we'll conduct this like business. Don't believe this piss bag. He started it. A noble, okay. There. That wasn't so hard, was it? We identified the confusion, and we worked past it. I'm Lord Pell Harmond. I do hope, Inquisitor, that you continue to respond to reason. After all, your choice of company is hardly virtuous. Freaking user you are. Another noble prick who punches down. We're the same, you and I. Well, that is overstating it. You are... Nothing like me, but we both need people. 
You want to talk now, but Sarah is my ally. You attacked her friends. Come now. You know how much her meddling cost me. Because apparently you were complicit. Honestly, previous to this very moment, I thought you'd also been tricked by these red jennies. Despite your foreign nature, as Inquisitor, you are a social peer. I attacked them on behalf of us both. Ass biscuit. <sighs> Quiet. Inquisitor, Herald, I don't want to be your enemy. I'm barely invested in being hers. If you are willing to recognize an opportunity, we could be exceptional partners. Nothing is free. What do you expect from the Inquisition? Access, Inquisitor. Your diplomat is wisely selective. Josie has better taste than him, yeah? Lady Montelier knows a wise acquisition. Or perhaps can be made to see one. Stop talking to him. Really, just stop it. I feel like that's too far. But also we know that Sarah takes pleasure in doing that. She has no issue with that. Our first meeting was like, yeah, I just killed him. You were up to something in Vichelle, Harmond. What was it? If you mean bettering my wealth and position, I'm always seeking that. By getting people hurt? <sighs> Lady Shell Morveau and I were jockeying for the land south of Vershell. To claim land, you must populate it. My people encouraged hers to leave. Her people answered in kind, etc. Really, it was all terribly standard displacement until your troops seemed to change the balance. Well played. Tell the snot splash no already. Not sane again. <laughs> but I'm investigating. The servants you killed, they did nothing except talk about what was going on. You killed my contacts. My friends. That is entirely true. Well, that should be that then. You're the one who empowered them, made their complaints a threat. Perhaps you should have warned them about talking to you. Three, two, frigging done! Oh! Uh, now what was the point of that? Oh. Mother puss bucket, frigging bastard, shite bag, piss face! Eat it, you lop son of an arse nut! Rots Sarah! Of piece of Sarah! Uh, what? <laughs> You know what? You know what, though? The fact that she was like, every time I would investigate and she was like telling me to stop, I was like, is she actually going to like chime in if I keep investigating? And she fucking did. And I think that that's kind of great because I didn't want to tell her to just kill him but I did want to investigate. So the fact that the game limits you to three investigate options before Sarah like chimes in <laughs> and beats the fuck out of him. Oh man, really had an unfortunate like throw with that, uh, with that knife that was rolling a critical one on your dice there to just have the knife fall flat against the chest. Oh, okay. It was, kind of very satisfying, especially with the fact that uh, he got Sarah's contacts killed, so. And I think he's dead. I think you're done. At this point, you're making wine. <laughs> Ugh, that makes it worse. Friends, Inquisitor. Better than his lot any day. Jesus. <laughs> All right, Sarah. She got to unleash some anger there. Oh my God. That's not how I expected that to go at all. But the fact that um, your character actually warns what? you. What do you want? Because I'm still angry. Angry face. And you should thank me for stomping the smile off that ass. He was getting in your head. Um, the fact that she actually gives you a warning that she's, she's just like, stop talking or I'm gonna take matters into my own hands. And she actually does, I think, is like a very realistic human interaction instead of them being forced to wait for you to sequentially go through your investigative options. Um, 
Yeah, god damn it. I did what I thought was best. It wasn't ideal and I apologize. What? Really? Really. Well, good then. Right, what do you mean? Because I am really not used to that acceptance thing you're doing right there. That is very true. She's definitely not used to us being like more accepting of her because she's very abrasive when you first meet her and very annoying. And you're just like, ah, you know, but then you kind of like, you get to know her a little bit more and she's a little bit less annoying. And then Vivian goes from being quite entertaining when you first meet her to being really annoying. <laughs> And it's just so funny that those characters are introduced to the game at so many different points. You have the one that represents the little people and the one that represents the big people. And you really see how those attitudes come into play uh, over time. We'll have some differences, but I want to be one of your friends. You're pretty big to be one of my contacts. Important, I mean, not fat. But all right, Inquisitor. You're on my good side. We'll see if it lasts. She says some things that are funny as well, but then she says some things that are just like stupid and cringe where she goes, angry face. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Sarah. And we've got a new operation available. Sitting and waiting. Great, yeah? Um, yes. My camera is down here. Is your network of contacts still active after what happened? After Lord Arsehole and Vichelle? Of course. He may have killed people, but that just means there's more who hate him. You should be one of them, but maybe not. So watch out for that. We annoyed some nobles. Does that really help all that much? It helped make a dead idiot. That's good return for time. I don't get what's so hard to understand. Your stuff works the same. Your inquisition, I mean. Punch a bully, people like you. Do it because they asked, or let them think they asked. They like it even more. It's inspiring, even if it sometimes goes tits up and they take a hit back. You know, like Haven. I get it. Kind of. We just don't think of what you do as that kind of inspiration. Well, we should take a good hard look at where our people come from. All the same people. At least my baddies are understandable. No kicking in the sky there. True. We'll talk another time. It's all good, innit? So good in it, love. All right. There you go. That was that was a journey. Okay, that was that. <laughs> um, in terms of the inner circle, we've got uh, traveling to Care Oswin with Cassandra, bringing Dorian to the uh, the Garden Lantern. We've got heading to the Storm Coast with Bull. Uh, find the spirit with Solus in the Exalted Plains. Enter Valimar. Meeting with Josephine. I think we should go for one of the earlier ones that we've got. Um, Solus asked us to go find the spirit in the Exalted Plains um, a long time ago. So it has been summoned against its will and needs his help. Um, so we'll focus on that. Uh, so I think what, what could be a good idea on how to like sort of tackle just how much we have to do is focusing on main quests and the inner circle and then when we go to these locations trying to hit all of the other stuff that we can we can find you know also just looking at this this is actually really cool it's like the last supper but like our team and also looking at this i think this sort of insinuates that we have um all of our companions, I think. So I don't think there'll be anyone else joining us at this point. I think I hypothesized when we were looking at some empty graves that didn't have names on them in Here Lies the Abyss. I was like, maybe there are still companions to come in like late into the game or something. Um, but looking at this artwork, this seems pretty all encompassing. Cullen, Vivian, Varric, Cole, Solus, Cassandra. Uh, maybe me? Is this supposed to represent the Inquisitor? Um, Iron Bull, Dorian, Liliana, Sarah, Josephine, and Blackwall. Or is that just, I guess that's supposed to represent me, right? Maybe? All right, we're going to, uh, in, in that case, do Solus's quest. So we're going to go to the Exalted Plains. Uh, we can also find a Circle Tome out here, and there's a Venatori out here. 
And so Hildebrandt is here. So considering this is a spirit related quest, um, I think it's pretty obvious who we'll be taking with us in this one. Um, and then if we're going to take a warrior with us, um, I kind of want to take, right, we might take Cassandra for the, for what she wants to do with Sir Hildebrandt. But I'm also tempted to bring Dorian as well. Um, but we'll go for Cassandra just to have the warrior. That will be my three. So this is our first time going to the Exalted Plains as well. Inquisitor, welcome to the Exalted Plains, a place with a long and bloody history. Even now, the region is volatile. <sighs> this was a front in the Civil War. Now there's rebels called the Freemen of the Dales, recently emerged and adding to the chaos. Really interesting that like at a certain point in the game, every single new location you go to adds a floating option with, um, with Harding. This is where the elves made their last stand, isn't it? Ah, you've studied the Dales. Yes. When offered a chance to lay down their arms and surrender, they refused. <clears throat> Have you seen the ears? This is, there's been a couple of points in this game where they, they make some interesting sort of Dalish commentary. And I'm like, pointy. This rebel group, tell me more about them. They seem to be simple deserters, tired of fighting and dying for either the Empress or the Grand Duke. Now they want the Dales for their own. Worse, they're more organized than we anticipated. Be wary. Be wary. What else can you tell me? Scouts have sighted Dalish elves. There must be a clan camp somewhere on the plains. That will be all. Thank you. With the rifts and the undead, the Arlesians have lost ground. Most have been driven back to their forts. We have to stabilize the region, allowing the Imperial Army to re-establish its presence. Good luck, Your Worship. You'll need it. Done. Okay, let's have a look. Where we are. I think, um, what's kind of, uh, a little bit of a relief, I suppose, is the Hinterlands seems to be the biggest location, uh, in all the ones that we've gone to. Um, so it's quite a relief that the other ones are, are smaller because I, I like that we have a, a lot of different areas to explore. It's really, uh, really, really good after Dragon Age 2 to have just so much more available to us, but it, it can be quite overwhelming at the same time. So it's, it definitely is a, um, a mixed bag, but I am very grateful that we get to see so much more of Thetis. And this game adds a tremendous amount of um, of lore and reading, more so than the previous two games combined, it feels like. So I really be lubing up the vocal cords um, for all of this sweet lore as well. And it's, it's very nice. The mark on the statue reads, Let the eternal flame purify your soul. Guardians of the... Sometimes I end up um, talking too much and then I tr start tripping over my words because I'm, my brain has reached its capacity, but we do our best. Let the light of Andraste lift your spirits. I love that the game's like, let's just give you three landmarks to start, spam you with them. And my Inquisitor's like, yes, plant the flag. <laughs> How, How dare you knock me over and say that to me? That was a cool. Ramparts. I wonder why. It was a cool uh, shield design, though. 
Freeman messages. The Inquisition have arrived. They will take the Dales and say it is the Herald of Andraste's right. There is no such right. These lands should be yours. We cannot allow the Inquisition to gain a foothold. As Orlais' true defenders, you know what to do. Gordian. Memorials of the Second Exalted March, the Path of Flame. Remember where Andraste's champions first set foot in the Exalted Plains, called Dirth Hoveran by, by the Elves? Halam Sharal's dark heart was conquered, but one last challenge came from the Elves. Who would not submit to the Maker? They gathered upon the plain. Our champions answered their call. Marching in Andraste's light on the Path of Flame, Lord Demetrius Ar Aron, Sister Amity, and Sir Brandis of Lac Celestine called the Silver Helm. And on that note as well, we were given Codex Entry upon arriving here. The Dales, a promise lost. There we see the Winter Palace at Halam Sharal. Gaze upon its white walls and golden spires, built on the broken dreams of a people. Our people. The human prophet Andraste was a slave in the Tevinter Imperium, as our ancestors were. When she rose up against them, we rose up with her. Together we fought for freedom. In gratitude and kinship, Andraste promised the elves a new land, the Dales. And although she died, her sons kept her promise. Our people came from Father's Tevinter to claim this new land. Here, our journey ended. This was our Halam Sharal. As we laid the first stone for the city, our people vowed that no human would ever set foot on our lands. The greatest of our warriors swore to uphold this vow. One by one they came, invoking the names of Elganan and Mithal, Anduril, and Gilanain. Before all our gods, they dedicated themselves to Halam Sharal, becoming our protectors, our Emerald Knights. They would ensure that the Dales remained free. It was free for over three centuries. The humans in their new Andrustian chantry would not let us be. They pushed against our borders. They sent missionaries to spread the word of their prophet. They sought ways to subjugate the people once more. When we refused, we angered them. They destroyed us. Even the Emerald Knights could not stand against the might of their army, armored in faith. In the name of their Andraste, they burned Halam Sharal, scattering us to the winds. They forgot once that long ago that... Sorry, they forgot that once, long ago, Andraste's followers and the elves marched together. They forgot that Andraste called Shatan brother. A promise lost, as told by Keeper Gesharal to the young hunters of the Ralaferan clan on the outskirts of Halam Shural. And what I really like about this is even though we are not the herald of Andraste and the mark was an accident and all of that kind of stuff, and it was the divine that was behind us at the beginning of the game, what I really like about the fact that we're an elf and being called the Herald of Andraste, is it harkens back to this stuff and it makes so much sense. I think if we were like a dwarf or a canary, everyone would be like much more like question mark, huh? What? Like especially a canary being the Herald of Andraste is like the weirdest thing ever, but it being an elf isn't too far fetched, especially when you have this as like context. Human makes the most sense because humans want humans to be the special ones, but I really like the message that this sends for us being the Herald of Andraste. Because people are like, oh yeah, she kind of helped the elves. So she's trying to remind us of that um, all the way into the future, and I kind of like that. I like how it can be um, presented that way even if we know that's not the case, that just allows us to maybe um, change the perspective of some some of the more conservative types in Thedas. <laughs> Torn Chit. Dear sir, enclosed is payment for the last shipment. The Lord greatly enjoyed the fish, prepared exactly as you recommended. How do you do it? Please keep them coming. He has a hankering for trout this week. Very ill. So long, and thanks for all the fish! <laughs> Is there, not, is there not even a rift nearby? There's just there's just demons hanging out. Let me just, 
Let me just get that. That's fine. That's fine. All right, what's nearby? Uh, undead ramparts. Corporal Rosslyn reports undead holding the Western ramparts. They are rising from somewhere within the trenches. You believe it may have something to do with the Freeman. Gordon Freeman? All right, so Solar says over there. First Enchanter over there. Unless Venatoria over there. Unfinished business over there. So far away. Okay, well, we'll be doing Solus's first. Give us a chance to check out this area. Halin Sulan. Look how beautiful they are. You know what I hate is uh, to get the codex entry, I gotta kill one. I can't. These two are together. I can't kill. I need to find one on their own. There's no way I can kill the two of them. They're a couple. They're on a date. I can't do that. That'd be so rude. Uh huh, you got frozen. Solus needs help. I mean, this time he actually did need it. He did almost die. Do you see how I did 200 fire damage to it just then, but then it also said immune? It's really strange. Like, it, it did both, because I know that rage demons are supposed to be immune to fire damage. But is it the same sort of thing where there's those magical barriers that you're supposed to attack with a matching element, but then you can attack it with any element anyway for some reason? It feels a little bit like that. Uh Roselle, if you arrive while I'm out foraging, I left the herbs and you asked for in the cleft of the rock near camp. Get started on brewing and I'll see you for supper. Grab it. Yeah, there's one on its own. So sorry, little one. It feels like a crime to kill a Hala as an elf. But Solus is doing it too, so... Can't really blame him. Uh, is it popping up with a codex entry? Thank you. I was about to say, if it doesn't pop up with a codex entry, I'm going to be upset. How dare you? Okay, let's read the codex entry that you unlock by being a fucking holla murderer. Um, where is it? The first thing you must understand about the holla is that they are not our servants. They are not our pets. They are our brothers and sisters. Remember that Gelanane, the first holla and mother of them all, was once a huntress of the people. Without the holla, there would be no Dalish. The second thing you must understand about the Hala is that you cannot force a Hala to do something against her will. I have heard tales of Shemlin who come across herds and attempt to capture the Hala using ropes and bridles. Many Shemlin have died impaled on horns that the Hala once bore our knights into battle. The fierce blood of a warrior still runs through her veins and she would sooner fight to the death than demean herself. Like the Dalish, the Hala are proud. A Hala knows who she is and will tolerate no being that tells her that she is less. How then do we harness them to the Aravels? How do we ride them or strap our packs to them? Well, how do you get a brother, a sister, or a friend to do you a favor? Simple, isn't it? You ask. If you have a Hala's trust, she will give you her blessing. It's striking that humans never think to ask for a Hala's friendship, but then they are Shems and respect nothing. It's something that always, um... Something that always bugs me is um, people's uh, surprise. So much pain. It wore down the walls. It's something that always bugs me is people, when they get surprised that um, animals have uh, feelings, you know, because they can't communicate with words, that is like the wall for a lot of people. That's like the disconnect that like they can't like 
feel emotions and feelings because they can't communicate them you know what i mean when it's very clear that animals are very emotional creatures um and it's a, a bit of a shame that a lot of people don't really it doesn't click for them in their head <laughs> you know light veil fire oh well i'm assuming uh I was said I was gonna assume it was this way, but this looks caved in, but it is right here. Ancient Elven glyphs. Oh, there's four of them. The revealed symbols show what appear to be Dirthamon, the Elven god of secrets, on the back of a large crow. Oh, yes. This is part of a larger set. Would you like to collect them, Solus? Yes, I've collected my Elven gods. Um, all right, well, I guess we got to go and look around for those. They're, hang on. Are they going to be on the map? They are on the map. Uh, there's four of them, but only two revealed themselves. So maybe the third is a super special secret one. I guess we'll see. That's another thing. The elven gods and the elven lore. Oh, juicy stuff. Especially when I remember us going through the Dalish camp uh, in Dragon Age Origins and just reading all of the different ones. And I just remember going, this is my favorite, <laughs> you know, like that was the thing in Dragon Age Origins. We were going through collecting all the lore from all of the different sort of aspects of, of the world. And I just remember getting to the Elvish stuff and I was going, this is my favorite part of the game. So I'm this is why I'm, I think I'm very excited that we have a lot of like weird elvish stuff happening in this game like and me being an elf feels very nice we've got corypheus's orb being elvish in nature um we've got um this guy who is very in tune with with the fade and with weird elven things as well so i'm i'm excited about the potential of that um there's just been some good stuff and then knowing that the forbidden oasis is like the elven ruins of Solasan um, is also very interesting. A prideful temple filled with secrets. Foreman's logbook. The yellowed logbook contains records of the day-to-day -day running of a small silver mine. The most recent entries differ slightly from the ones that came before. Um, Eleven crates. D crew broke through the wall and found a hidden chamber. It looks like a tomb. Gave orders to seal it back up. Very smart. <laughs> Meanwhile, humanity goes, let's go and crack open old tombs in Egypt. Let's unleash the Pharaoh's curse. Nine crates, D crew disobeyed instructions. Uh, lead of D crew asked assistance of two from A crew to dig deeper into the tomb. Lost one, gave order to seal chamber again, emph emphasized unlikelihood of great riches within. All of D crew and A crew missing in sudden collapse. Panic over elven curses, B and C crews inciting. New lowest record, two days running. Men want to collapse the entire mine to prevent curse from escaping. Urging reason. The Pharaoh's curse. It's out. Um, there's a scattered glyph this way. I don't know if we can get it from over this way, though. I have to go through this rift to, to get it. Rash vine. Yeah, you know, I think I can go through. Yeah, we can go through this way. Take on a rift. Find this glyph. It'd be nice if you could get the codex entries um, from creatures by like, like doing that next to them, <laughs> or sneezing on them instead. Um, if you could like search them. Look at this. This is cool. There's just so many cool little details scattered throughout all these environments that I really like. Fen Harel, the Dread Wolf. There is precious little we know about Fen Harel, for they say he did not care for our people. Elganan and Mithal created the world as we know it. Andril taught us the ways of the hunter. Silas and June gave us fire and crafting. 
but Fenharel kept to himself and plotted the betrayal of all the gods. This was my favorite one. This was so cool because this was like, oh, hey, you have to go over here to do this. And oh, you guys, you got to go over here to do this. And then he sealed them both in. <laughs> Just like being a being a goddamn um, mischief maker. This was, I just remember reading this or like the similar things about the, the gods in Origins and just being like, there's so much history to the elves specifically that is just so satisfying to like read about. I also love the elvish language because it's so elegant and beautiful and very satisfying to speak and very satisfying to like listen to as well more than anything else. Like the elvish language in just fantasy is just always just so consistently beautiful. <laughs> Elganan and Mathar created worlds. We know Amadro told the of the Hunter. Uh, so yeah, Fenrir kept to himself and plotted the betrayal of all the gods. And after the destruction of Arlathan, when the gods could no longer hear our prayers, it is said that Fenrir spent centuries in a far corner of the earth, giggling madly and hugging himself in glee. The legends say that before the fall of Arlathan, the gods we know and revere fought an endless war with others of their kind. There is not a Haren among us who remembers these others. Only in dreams do we hear whispered the names of Geldoran and Danthal and Anaris, for they are the forgotten ones, the gods of terror and malice, spite and pestilence. In ancient times, only Fenharel could walk without fear among both our gods and the Forgotten Ones, for although he is kin to the gods of the people, the Forgotten Ones knew of his cunning ways and saw him as one of their own, and that is how Fenharel tricked them. Our gods saw him as brother, and they trusted him when he said that they must keep to the heavens while he arranged a truce, and the Forgotten Ones trusted him also when he said he would arrange for the defeat of our gods if only the Forgotten Ones would return to the Abyss for a time. They trusted Fenharel, and they were all of them betrayed, and Fenharel sealed them away so they could never again walk among the people. From the tale of Fenharel's triumph, as told by Gisharl, keeper of the Ralafarin clan, Dalish elves. Basically, we got our Loki, but in elven lore. <laughs> it's a very cool story. And then this is the really interesting part, because all I know, and it, it's very exciting, but also I'm kind of nervous about it, but the only thing that I know about Dragon Age 4 is the title of the game which is pretty hard to avoid. And it's called Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Um, so that's all that we know about it. So am I, am I gonna have to play as an elven character in that game again? I don't wanna think about it too hard because like, I wish that Dragon Age 4 didn't have a title <laughs> just for me to just not think about it. But I just know that that's kind of like looming in my future. And I guess that's looming in all of our futures is the next Dragon Age game is called Dreadwolf. It's called Dreadwolf, isn't it? I'm not crazy. Um, Dragon Age 4 is uh, it's called Dreadwolf. Yeah, Dragon Age 4 title is Dragon Age Dread, uh, Deadwolf. Yeah. Uh, not Deadwolf, Dreadwolf. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't want to think about it too hard because we're still in Inquisition. So I don't know where we are and I don't know how things are going to play out. And I don't know if it's even connected. It could be a prequel, which could be really exciting. I wouldn't expect it to be a prequel, but okay. I'm already getting carried away because I said I wouldn't talk about it. And here I am talking about it, but it's exciting stuff. We'll table it for now. But because the elven lore is like very, very satisfying and probably the most enjoyable thing uh, for me out of all of the different lore pieces in Dragon Age, I'm very, very excited for what the next game could potentially be. Um, I don't, I don't even know how it's gonna go. I'm assuming that there would be another playable character again, uh, considering every Dragon Age game has been like. Um, you know, new character, new stuff. 
so I expect that we'd have something else, but then do you think it's like sensible for us to play an elvish character twice in a row? Goodbye. I could play like an elven rogue instead of a uh, an elven mage. I just think considering the considering the title, it could be the, like rewarding to play as an elf. Or maybe maybe they'll allow us to play a canary again. And then I can, uh, and then I can be one. I don't know. It's too early to tell. Anyway, that's me getting carried away with the next Dragon Age game. I, I think I'm just happy that there's that there is going to be another one, and this won't be the last one. Because I've said time and time again, uh, in terms of the Bioware games that I've played, um, that. I'm a massive Star Wars fan, and I'm a massive sci-fi fan in general, um, so I love Mass Effect, but my favorite Bioware series is um, absolutely Dragon Age, just just for the sheer fact that the, the world building and lore just is genuinely out of this world. My goddamn Veilfire torch disappeared. God damn it. I was using that. I'm gonna carry it all the way to this, um, where is it? I'm gonna, oh, do I have to go through a secret waterfall? Nice. I'm gonna go back to the veil fire thing. But yeah, but out of all the Bioware games, I mean, I haven't played Jade Empire yet. That's also on my to-do list. And I haven't played the early uh, Baldur's Gate games yet. And I think that was also by Bioware. Um. But out of the ones that I've played so far, um, Dragon Age is absolutely at, at the top. I think it's because um, while Star Wars is not an original IP for Bioware to have tackled, I think that they did a really excellent job taking us all the way back to like the old Republic. Um, and something that really surprised me. Mm, Veilfire. Mm, Veilfire. Something that really surprised me uh, was the Old Republic, I believe, was... That's where it, it began. It began with Bioware. And that kind of took me by surprise because I'd kind of avoided the Old Republic um, growing up because I just never had access to it, really. Um, so actually getting to, to witness uh, the Old Republic and um, what Bioware did was amazing. Is very beautifully crafted uh, part of the Star Wars universe, and then Mass Effect is just great as well. Um, I love the concept of us being far into the future with humanity's development among the stars, and I think the lore of all the alien civilizations is amazing. But then there's just something about Dragon Age that just really tickles me, um, and I do love fantasy almost as much as sci-fi, so it's not like it's hard for me. But just something about Dragon Age. And I think the fact that I had this opinion and feeling about Dragon Age being above Mass Effect and Knights of the Old Republic ever since Origins, I think it says a lot. Like, it's very special. Uh, I am so absolutely in love with this series uh, and, and its world. And that's why, that's why we read all of the lore. That's why we discuss and talk at length about our characters. That's why we have these light bulb eureka moments about like characters and story and all of this stuff because i've got the the whiteboard with all of the red string uh in the back of my mind at all times just going ooh, and it's so cool and that's why it's so easy for me to start getting lost on a tangent when we talk about the next game and i try and actively not talk about the next dragon age game but it's kind of hard when a game puts a fucking lore entry in your face that says, look, Dreadwolf, and then the next game is called that. And I have to, like, try and not anticipate what's around the corner. You know? But it's very, very exciting. Roses are red, pansies are yellow. How are you doing away from your fellow? Dear Valerie, I wrote that for you. I hope you like it. I'm deep in the usurper's territory, but I've kept out of sight. One of my many talents. It's been hard. The thought of you keeps me alive. I'll be home as soon as our Empress wins the day. Missing you. 
Albane. I know pansies aren't always yellow. I couldn't think of any other yellow flowers. Mate, get creative. Guys, look, it's the Dreadwolves. Look at all this good fish going to waste. All right, are we getting close to this rune? We're adventuring. All my people are ready to report in. There we go, look at this. Northern ruins. Oh, we gotta go in. Shrine to Silas. Oh god, this is gonna be such a satisfying little uh, area here. Look at this. So Ahala ate the elves, as you can see. It's there in the belly. <laughs> hey, here we go. Ah! <laughs> Kill them all! Jesus! Kill that warrior! <laughs> Yeah, keep crying, baby. I'm actually, um, actually pretty surprised that we haven't had, um... Why did they have to fight? Cole's the only one saying something at the moment. I'm surprised Solus hasn't said more. Like, hello? Say something, please? Uh, excuse me, what happened to my... I was holding my Veilfire torch and it just disappeared out of my hands. I just carried it... I just Olympics carried it all the way here. Oh my god. Alright. Oh my god, I carried it all the way here and there's a fucking... Okay, never mind. What the fuck? <laughs> I carry it all the way here and the game says, why would you even bother, dude? Here's one I prepared earlier. This. Here's me just trying to do my Olympic torch run. The revealed symbols show a hawk and a hare chasing the sun. Hawk? Hawk? The Elven Glyphs. Pascal. August is on the trail of some Elven mystery. If what I've heard is true, I don't want that pompous ass getting his hands on it. I think he's smug now. He's searching for ruins. I know at least two. The ancient baths and the ruin in Enavurus. You know the one. Remember the mead? Get going. I'll send a messenger if I hear more. Duheim. Duheim. Alright, um, well if I'm learning anything about these stupid Veilfire things, don't even bother carrying them with you because they will just automatically disappear and you have exactly what you need nearby. Here I am thinking that the game has like a level of like, uh, challenge and reward if you carry it through, but apparently not. Yo! Ancient elven robes and a ring of doubt. A young Tavinta magister forced into an arranged marriage enchanted this, his wedding ring with the power and visibility. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Where's my husband? <laughs> Lindarane's talisman, a lost Dalish artifact. Cool. Alright. I have a lost Dalish artifact. It didn't pop up with anything. Um, that's fine. I don't care that it didn't pop up with anything. Uh, weapons. Oh yeah, I didn't read those. I said that I would and then I forgot. Um, I've got some weapons that we picked up that I haven't read yet. Um, did I read Tempest? think so. But we didn't read these, I don't think. So, Axe of Green Edges. One of the last Emerald Knights alive off the Exalted March destroyed the Elven Dales. Namaris famously lodged his axe in the tree he had planted in the Emerald Grave, saying, let it remain here until my people are free to mark my soul, which shall never rest. Then he threw himself into a river, his body never found or interred. An Elysian adventurer poisoned the tree to take the weapon after fleeing Dalish hunters seeking vengeance for the sacrilege. And that kind of plays into where we are now. Fade Knocker, a staff handcrafted for battle, as Enchanter Islao once said, magic exists to serve man, and some are best served with a knock upside the head. 
The Last Stand. This mall reportedly made the difference in Hosberg's survival of a darkspawn siege in the Third Blight. To this day, paintings in the Anderfels depict Lord Ansel atop the city's Black Tower, lofting the mall defiantly. However, while Hosberg did force the Horde into retreat, Grey Wardens entering the city found only chaos and no answer. We, <clears throat> we definitely read this one, I think. Did we read The Witch of Destiny or did I just give it to Blackwall? There's so much reading that it, it does get hard to recall what we have read. And not in a sense that I forget the actual information, but it's like I just forget if we've actually read something, which is kind of a bit annoying. A good and colorful item for those who have hearty constitutions, this shield formed when a dragon shed her scales and fragments wafted on the soft and flavorful breeze into a dairy farm. Wielding it, Sir Jacques de Montry was unstoppable until he fought Par Merchant, or dishonorably. Uh, his witful last, wistful last words as he lay full of holes, it was he who had failed, not the shield. I don't remember reading that. Sometimes you can remember uh, while I'm reading. Other times, it's like, hmm. Come on. I really like these. These look really nice. Except it's just not as good. That's the thing that annoys me the most. I'm like, God damn it. It's not as good. Unique light armor. Um, I'm going to keep my dragon armor on, but I might give this to Solas instead. Elf trained mages only. It is difficult to tell what material these elven robes are made from. If anything, they seem to be formed from some kind of lyrium or other magical substance held together over the long ages by means long since forgotten. They look really nice. And with a little bit of dye, uh, with a little bit of armor tinting, that would look very nice. Um, Solus, would you like to get out of your... Oh, they look great on you. Look how different they can look on different characters. Look at that. Popped collar syndrome. Double popped collar syndrome for extra asshole points. Oh my god. There you go. Upgrades. I will change the colors of those, but that looks cool. Good stuff. Uh, I don't think I've got any weapon upgrades for anyone, to be honest. Oh, you could have a mole if you want. It gives you more damage. I think this is two-handed, though, so probably not. Oh my god! That honor guard sword is fucking huge! What is going on there? A great sword. Can we just have a normal sword for, um... For cast, please? Oh my god. I got some upgrades for, um... You got some upgrades for my other warriors, at least. Damn. Okay, that's that one done. We got more glyphs. Ah, oh, okay. Wait a minute. More glyphs have revealed themselves. I thought there was only four total. Now there's five? Okay. The plot thickens. We're making our way over to... Solus's one, which is over here. At the very least, there is, um, glyphs nearby. Let's head on over there. My companions are mighty quiet today. Solus and Cole are usually the, the chatterboxes. Part of me kind of wishes that there wasn't, like, like, I get the fact that you've got to discover the map yourself, but I wish that you could, like, pay your scouts to be like, hey, can you remove the fog for me? Can you just clear the map so I can see where I should go? Oh, come on, guys. Jump down the waterfall. Don't just teleport. I wanted to see if they would fold in. Stuck. Who's blowing horns out in the distance? It's a very beautifully put together area. It's just a, we're just having a gorgeous hike, you know, on the exalted plains.
The Dalish, Dalish are here. To be expected. Ooh, we got a Dalish encampment. This is very cool. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think about my party. Um, this should be fine. You never know what to expect when you're about to enter a Dalish encampment. Traveling these plains, have you come across a golden hallow? I fear human soldiers may kill her. If she would only draw close, I could gain her trust. I could protect her. I don't know. The last time, the last time I encountered uh, an animal of a different color, it turned into a giant rage demon. Goddamn Woolsley. Golden Hala, Hanal Gilan. Hanal Gilan. I've heard stories of such a creature. Yes. Some of us believe she comes to the people in times of great need. I get to use Dalish knowledge when talking to the Dalish. Can you get Dalish favor? Why do you think soldiers hunt your Hala? Pelts and horns sell for gold in Shem markets, I hear. And if they were golden? We gotta look for a golden Hala. Dereth Shiral. By the grace of the Dalish, Dalish favor. Okay, interesting. And Aran at Hishan, my sister. It is good to see another of the people in this place from which we all came. Still beautiful, isn't it? Even with scars left by the Shemlin War and all the troubles that followed. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully, companions, can you settle down, please? What troubles you, Haran? Where do I start, Dalen? The armies cause rock slides. They dig ditches that trip the Hala and destroy the Aravils, making passage impossible. Precisely when the clan needs him most, my first tavern defies my wishes and mounts an excursion to the Emerald Graves. And now, I've learned that the grounds of Far Balanaris are infested by angry spirits from the beyond. I can deal with that for you. Stay alert, Delen. Spirits are dangerous, and be mindful of the resting places of our dead. Far Balanaris is sacred ground. Dareth Shiral, Delen. Same outfit as Solas. And we can fast travel here, that's nice. Elganan, the stores are so low. You seem troubled. It's it's nothing. Just our stores. With the Shem War and the demons, replenishing them has been difficult. For one, we're almost out of herbs, and we lack materials to repair the Aravils. I don't even remember. There's so much we're missing. It's all written in my ledger. This person's name is familiar? For some reason, this feels the name feels familiar to me. June, god of the craft. We dedicated all our crafts to June, for it is he who taught the people to bend the branches of trees to make our bows, and to fashion coverings of furs and ironbark. Without June, would we have the Aravel or the harnesses for our hala? When the people were young, we wandered the forests without purpose. We drank from streams and ate the berries and nuts that we would could find. We did not hunt for we had no bows. We wore nothing, for we had no knowledge of spinning or needlecraft. We shivered in the cold nights and went hungry through the winters when all the world was covered in ice and snow. Then Silas the hearthkeeper came and gave us fire and taught us how to feed it with wood. June taught us to fashion bows and arrows and knives so that we could hunt. We learned to cook the flesh of the creatures we hunted over Silas's fire. And we learned to clothe ourselves in their furs and skins and the people were no longer cold and hungry. Ranil. You were the one they called the Herald of Andraste. For all the world's a venerated Dalish elf. That's never happened before, has it? All the clans are talking about you. Or so Keeper Howen says. Ah, uh, talk. What do they say exactly? Good things, I think. A few hope this is a sign of change for our people. Real change. If it's true, I want to be a part of it. You want to join the Inquisition? It won't happen. 
Keeper Howen won't allow it. He doesn't trust anything to do with the Chantry or Andraste. I could try to convince your Keeper. You could try. I'll take my leave. Earn enough favor to recruit Lauraniel, okay. Master Taniel? And Aran Atishan. You were the craftsman here? Yes, Dallin. I embark leather and such, as I'm sure you know. I'm afraid I cannot trade with you. You are one of the people, but we do not know or trust your inquisition. In time, perhaps. Fair enough. Do you want to say anything, Mega Mind? You got anything? Damn. Why am I the only one saying anything around here? Mithal, the great protector. Elganan had defeated his father, the sun, and all was covered in darkness. Pleased with himself, Elganan sought to console his mother, the earth, by replacing all that the sun had destroyed. But the earth knew that without the sun, nothing could grow. She whispered to Elganan this truth and pleaded with him to release his father, but Elganan's pride was great, and his vengeance was terrible, and he refused. It was at this moment that Mithal walked out of the sea of the Earth's tears and onto the land. She placed her hand on Elganan's brow, and at her touch he grew calm and knew that his anger had led him astray. Humbled, Elganan went to the place where the sun was buried and spoke to him. Elganan said he would release the sun if the sun promised to be gentle and to return to the Earth each night. The sun, feeling remorse at what he had done, agreed. And so the sun rose again in the sky and shone his golden light upon the earth. Elganan and Mithal, with the help of the earth and the sun, brought back to life all the wondrous things that the sun had destroyed, and they grew and thrived. And that night, when the sun had gone to sleep, Mithal gathered the glowing earth around his bed and formed it into a sphere to be placed in the sky, a pale reflection of the sun's true glory. I just love the stories, right? The stories and the myths of the Elvish people. Like, it's just so well done. Elganan, the Allfather. Long ago, when time itself was young, the only things in existence were the sun and the land. The sun, curious about the land, bowed his head close to her body, and Elganan was born in the place where they touched. The sun and the land loved Elganan greatly, for he was beautiful and clever. As a gift to Elganan, the land brought forth... Sorry, the land brought forth great birds and beasts of sky and forest and all manner of wonderful green things. Elganan loved his mother's gifts and praised them highly and walked amongst them often. The sun, looking down upon the fruitful land, saw the joy that Elganan took in her works and grew jealous. Out of spite, he shone his face full upon the creatures the earth had created and burned them all to ashes. The land cracked and split from bitterness and pain, and cried salt tears for the loss of all she had wrought. The pool of tears cried for the land, became the ocean, and the cracks in her body, the first rivers and streams. Probably should have read this one first before the other one, because <laughs> this is like what happened before that. Um, we have read this stuff before in Dragon Age Origins, because I remember these similar uh, tales when we were walking through the, the Dalish encampment, but it's so nice to read them again. Uh, this time after like a lot of time has passed and we have a lot more Dragon Age in our brain. Elganan was furious at what his father had done and vowed vengeance. He lifted himself into the sky and wrestled the sun, determined to defeat him. They fought for an eternity and eventually the sun grew weak while Elganan's rage was unabated. Eventually, Elganan threw the sun down from the sky and buried him in a deep abyss created by the land's sorrow. With the sun gone, the world was covered in shadow, and all that remained in the sky were the reminders of Elganon's battle with his father, drops of the sun's lifeblood, which twinkled and shimmered in the darkness. Sometimes you go to read a, a word and it, your, your brain forgets how to differentiate between the F sound and the TH sound, and you're like, uh, <laughs> then you're just like, the land brought forth, land brought forth, great birds. Mithalan asked Valoran, where are you? Who's Valoran? My brother. He's been sullen for a while because the Keeper chose another as his apprentice. He thinks it's a slight, but it isn't. He just wasn't ready. Keeper Howen wants him to wait. Then he took off three nights ago on his own. I don't know what he was thinking. 
The Keeper sent hunters to search, but they never found a trace. Mathal's mercy. If anything's happened... <sighs> Another person to find. Okay. Let's take a look down here now. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Is here for the rash vine? Um, okay. We've got things to do here. Well-stocked camp. With the war ongoing and demons preventing safe travel through much of the Dales, the Dalish and the Plains have had trouble keeping supplies stocked. An elf named Nisa has made a list of what they need for their camp. I need a sp ah, this ledger. Greetings to you. Hold on. I gotta read your ledger. I, uh, hold on. I'll take my leave. This is the, the characters that automatically talk to you when you approach them. It's like, excuse me, speak to me only when spoken to, please. I'm trying to read your book. All right, spindleweed's getting scarce. Five bushels of spindleweed. Where do I deliver it to? Just to you? Because I've got, I think I've got that. You've brought supplies. If you could store them in that chest, oh. I would be grateful. Okay, I saw the thing that said place. There you go. Hey -ya! Okay, check ledger. Elfruit. Hey -ya! Your uncle misses you, Cassandra. Picked that up from my head, did you? No. He wrote you a letter. There was pain on the page. Stop going into my quarters. How many times must I tell you? Wow. Stop going into my quarters, Carl. That's an interesting conversation. Someone took canine leather without permission. Uh, yeah. We need more iron. Uh, yeah. I wish we had some great bear fur. Night's getting cold. If you Damn it. Store them in that chest, I would be grateful. How dare I have not the items that you require. I don't have three great bear pelts. <laughs> Alright, uh, we've got a fast travel point. We're going to quickly head back to Skyhold. Because everybody's ready to turn in on their things. And then we'll head back out. Summon the War Council! I must have results, please. What have you got for me today? Okay. Look at Reese and Evangeline. We've also got... Red Jenny attends a party now. Inquisitor, Evangeline and I owe you our freedom and indeed our very lives. I am greatly saddened to hear at what happened at the Conclave. I had truly hoped for a peaceful end to this conflict and the death of so many good people is a tragedy. Our own investigation took us to renegade Templars using a strange new red form of lyrium. I am ch chagrined to know that they were powerful enough to subdue us, although your agents tell us that these Red Templars serve as shock troops for the enemy, who has had both mages and Templars dancing to his tune. Evangeline and I need to recover from our wounds, and our presence at Skyhold will only cause tension with the rebel mages you brought into the Inquisition. Once we are healed, we would be honored to serve. Yours, Reese Senior Enchanter. There is a note below, presumably added by Cole. I asked you not to do this, I was upset until it saved them. This is good. I'm glad that he recognizes that it's good because we had to save them, you know? So I was like, as soon as that sort of comes into the mix, you're like, okay, I feel like we got to do something about it, you know? Even though he asked us not to. However, deploying Reese and Evangeline is the next one. We're going to head down to the Undercroft to do some weapon crafting and stuff because we've gotten more sigils now. Um, okay, Dwarven Slaves. A report has arrived from the site of the suspected Venatory Enclave. It is nonsensical given accepted historical record. Located Venatory Enclave, fires on approach, assumed they torched the, their camp while retreating. Not the case. Camp already destroyed. Venatory dead. Dwarven tools found, but no dwarves alive or dead. One deep stalker corpse found. Signs of blight corruption, best guess. Venatory surprised by forces emerging from the camp well. Assumed they left the same way. Well collapsed, no passage possible. Enclave scoured for resources for return for Skyhold. On return to Inquisition camp, message found next to a newly opened sinkhole. We always come for our own. What about you, Inquisition? Binthus Warhelm Kalsharok. 
Huh. That one's a... Uh, okay. A little bit... A little bit scary, that message there. Okay. Strike a bargain with the merchant princes. A bundle of documents at least 50 pages thick explains the trade agreement the Inquisition has entered into with the merchant princes of Antiva. Josephine has attached a note. Inquisitor, I'm more than satisfied with the agreement we reached with the merchant princes. Here is a duplicate. If you wish to review it, I would put aside three days and two dozen candles. Put it in the codex, you cowards. All right, let's break the venatory hold on, on Wycombe. Ambassador Montillier, it has been my pleasure to meet Duke Antoine of Wycombe and pay my respects on behalf of the Inquisition. The Duke is a most friendly man, indeed, I dare say he thinks the best of everyone and has advisors from as far away as Tevinter. Now, this is us thinking that the Tevinter advisor is Venatori. So we read this already. So Leliana, this is no longer a matter of diplomacy. Josephine's diplomat believes the Tevinter advisor is Venatori. We must eliminate him. Josephine says, though I fear for her safety, Lady Guinevere is a brilliant negotiator. If anyone can find a peaceful solution, it is her. Um, I'm not going to take chances. So let's eliminate this uh, Tevinter advisor. Let's see what we have. So we'll have Liliana go and do that. Lord Enzo of Antiva, how could you? The death of good Sir Ruth. Ah, oh, that's where we want to deploy recent Evangeline, the Brazilian forest. Okay. Uh, let's check out this one because we've had this for a while. This was one of our judgments from a while ago. This is a protest we must attend to, Inquisitor. A group of mages has heard of your judgment and the imposition of tranquility. They wonder why they fight for someone who can impose so brutal a penalty. They claim it is a betrayal of the promise of your actions at Redcliffe. We have to deal with this, Inquisitor. We cannot risk a second rebellion at this stage. Fair. I think, you know, tranquility is absolutely brutal, but we also gave it to someone who I feel... Uh, it doesn't feel like I wouldn't give I wouldn't put a tranquility judgment on anyone and everyone you know this particular case our alliances will not risk another mage war it has been hard enough to aim them at Corypheus a swift movement of troops will appease onlookers Liliana says you have taken a brutal stance if need be continue key agitators can disappear I don't really like that one and they're afraid send one Templar and one mage inquisitor two veterans to explain and remind them that mages created this punishment to protect the rest All right. Oh, we'll send Cullen to do that one. That feels kind of appropriate. No, we can't do that. Busy. Busy. Oh, I keep forgetting about that one. Diverting soldiers in the frost backs. Um, actually, maybe Josephine could do the Isles Invitation. Eh. Why won't you let me click on it? It won't let me click on it! <laughs> it won't let me click on anything, actually. Oh my god, no. You can't do any of them, right? Take me out, then. And then I have to come back in. Goddamn video game. Like, no, you're not allowed to. Let me let me pick it! Let me pick the mission! And then I start bashing my hands on the war table. Why won't you let me pick the operation? Yeah. Ambassador, I apologize for any unpleasantries, uh, unpleasantness that might have arisen from my last correspondence with the Inquisition. My people have been under tremendous strain Our for too long. Our handled themselves well in adamant. We've come a long way since Haven. I fear there's still a ways to go, but we're prepared. Oh, I remember this one. This was uh, sending a champion to fight in the melee. I think Josephine was appropriate for this one anyway, because it's uh, a well-chosen envoy could win us Ferelden allies because we can't truly run a Banorn, so... At your service. Josephine can go and do the Isle's Invitation. There we go. Off we go. See you later. That's that done. Now... I was thinking of actually checking in with Cole after what we've done. I might actually have a chat with a couple of our companions after some of these operations just to see if they've got anything to say about it. I can spare some time. What do you need? Carry on. 
Carry on, my boy. Keep your chin up, please. Not because we're all taller than you. Uh, we're going to... Oh, wait. Thren is here. Because we spoke to that new quartermaster who's very, like, nervous cough. But Thren's just chilling right here. Thanks for my life in Haven. You've all sought serving now. If that means change, so be it. That's so weird. Okay. Just kind of hanging around. Um, let's go talk to... Actually, hold on. Your worship. Can you think of any other tasks suitable for the charges? Nothing jumps out at me. If I come up with any ideas, I'll let you know. We'll talk later. Just to check if there's any operations available through Krem. Inquisitor. I'll keep an eye out. The, a joke, he laughs to himself, imagining herds of cattle in fields of iron. But now he worries it fits. I never know what you're saying. Do you want to go somewhere and you're more of a spirit now? May I ask how things are now that you're more of a spirit? Questions can be shackles, but you kept me in kindness. I will answer. Can you tell me more about the Fade, now that you're more connected to it? It is here, but held. Constrained by a construct. Veiled. Feelings, memories, minds, mortality, all shape it. A glass to hold water. We flow to the deep. Without you, we have nothing. Not even us. That's why we want so much. Hmm. Hmm. You don't mind killing people, even being more of a spirit? Monsters are easy, mindless, menacing. It's harder when it's people. Venatori, bandits, people who could change, but they chose. They hurt people. We need to stop them. My blades are yours to command. I forget later. So it washes clean. I forget later. Interesting. What is it like to be this way? I'm me. More me than I was. I can care and comfort, but keep clean. No shackles. They feel, forgive, forget, and I am free. Finally. Thank you. See? It feels, it feels much happier to be more spiritual than being more human. Being human is miserable. Can you tell me more about what happened at the Spire? You and the real Cole? I don't remember. I let that go. It isn't part of me anymore. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Oh. So maybe that we'd get more information on that if he had... Um, killed that guy and chosen to become um, more human as a, as a result because he wouldn't have shut that part away he would have embraced the the human side of himself we of all course. did all right who else have i got to speak to about things that we've done um i don't what other operations have we done oh yes yeah, dorian about the the real name what's on your mind Oh, okay. Come all this way to talk to you, Dorian. I should go. You know where I'll be. Maybe we have to do his quest first, and then he'll talk more about the uh, the whole book situation. It'll take him some time. I'm told you gave the Grey Wardens another chance, Inquisitor. Would I have done the same, I wonder? Forgiveness can be difficult. I hope the Order values what you've done and gives you no reason to regret it. Interesting. Her investigation options never go away, but we've already chosen those. I trust everything is well with the mages. We are mostly relieved. An alliance with the Inquisition offers security, although who knows for how long. I'll leave you to it. 
It is cool the things that she does um, speak about. I set aside an entire shelf for Grey Warden law, and so far it's not even half full. Those wardens and their secrets. It's so dark in here. Turn up the candles, please. We're supposed to have 52 copies of Hard in Hightown, and we're missing all but four. <laughs> oh no. I have to get scattered in Skyhold? Hard in, there's 48 Sky, uh, Hard in Hightown books in Skyhold? There are 47 ways to purify Wyvern venom to make it safe for human consumption. Why does Dragon Age insist on saying Wyvern? Instead of Wyvern. Did you know that Seeker Cassandra's ancestor lived for over 120 years? This man's got good stuff. Can't talk. I found an inappropriately shelved tome this morning, and I have to figure out how it got there. I hope the spy master doesn't have me flogged. Huh? The things they say about the spy master, they scare me. She does live in, like, a very interesting place up in the tower there. Look at all these books. <laughs> okay, that's time for us to stop. Look at all these books. Cool. Uh, Dorian's not ready to talk. Um, we will go. Uh, back out to the exalted plains. We travel. So uh, we'll just head back to the Dalish camp. And we'll go from there. Now, Cassandra's mission and Dorian's mission are all up at the top there. So I'm going to take this as an opportunity to just take some different people with me. And by different people, I just I will just change one. Um, I am going to bring Varric. Two rogues, two mages. Oops, no warriors. Because we will be fine. Um, just need that sweet, sweet banter. Talk about anything, anyone, please. Okay, so the Golden Haller from the Beyond and someone to lose. So we've got three dealish quests to do. We've also got bear pouts to get. Creators. If human soldiers come across the Golden Haller, they will certainly kill her. I will get it. Dereth Shiral. Ow. Creators. Stop! If human soldiers come across the Golden Halla, they will... Dereth Shira. All right, we're going to find the spirit with Solus. Hiya. We're going to teach Varric more about spirits once again, because he has a very practical uh, view on them. Thank you for this, Inquisitor. We are not far from where my friend was summoned. Everything here is blurry. It wants to forget, but now the rocks are solid. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh. <gasps> My friend. Ooh, it's in the form of a pride demon. They corrupted it. Yeah. It's in the form of a pride demon. The mages turned your friend into a demon. Yes. You said it was a spirit of wisdom, not a fighter. A spirit becomes a demon when denied its original purpose. So they summoned it for something so opposed to its own nature that it was corrupted. Fighting. Let us ask them. A mage! You're not with the bandits? Do you have any lyrium potions? Most of us are exhausted. We've been fighting that demon. You summoned that demon! Except it was a spirit of wisdom at the time. You made it kill! You twisted it against its purpose! I-I-I I understand how it might be confusing to someone who has not studied demons, but after you help us, I can- We are not here to help you! Oh my god. Uh, for someone who hasn't studied demons, oh my god. They really just instantly make this dude that appears instantly hateable. Like, you just want to punch him in the face straight away. Oh my god. Um, Solus is smarter than you are. <laughs> what a weird one to to throw back with. God. Um, so 
a spirit becomes a demon when denied its original purpose. And it makes me wonder how that can echo in potentially to Cole's moment of being a spirit. Um, instead of going for a more compassionate route, going for one of like, you know, revenge um, that would change him and allow him to apparently become more human, but it could also have a different effect on him too. It's just very interesting when we're coming to spirits and demons and thinking about all of the ways that we have encountered demons in the past and how differently it could have been, you know what I mean? Word of advice. I'd hold off on explaining how demons work to my friend here. Listen to me. I was one of the foremost experts in the Kirkwall Sir. Shut up. You summoned it to protect you from the bandits. I... Yes. You bound it to obedience, then commanded it to kill. That is when it turned. The summoning circle. We break it, we break the binding. No orders to kill, no conflict with its nature, no demon. What? The binding is the only thing keeping the demon from killing us. Whatever it was before, it is a monster now. Inquisitor, please. I want like Solus and I to collectively take the, our staffs and just like bonk him on the head like Gandalf. Bonk. Fool of a mage. I've studied rituals like this. I should be able to disrupt the binding quickly. Thank you. We must hurry! That dude sucks. Okay. So, make sure you pick the correct thing. Don't start it. Don't, don't attack the demon, you fucking... Can you guys stop attacking the demon, please? Solus, you're attacking your friend. Oh my god. going straight for Solus too. Die! All right. Oh my god. I guess I'm on a time limit here. I have to destroy these things before they destroy the demon. It's kind of... Can I get you guys to disengage, please? I just... All my people are going to get killed while I do this. Attack my target, will you? Stop attacking the friend. Letheline, here Abelos. Tell Abelos and Azel at Halim. Mami lava halani, mala solidina das, magilani midinan. Manuvinen. Dareth Shara. Translated Elvish. Why didn't we get that when we were in the Fade, when the Nightmare Demon was talking with Solus? Because, like, we're an Elvish character. We should know this stuff. So I get really kind of frustrated when they talk in Elven. I'm like, I like hearing it spoken in Elven, but then it being translated. That should happen more. That was nice. That took me by surprise. I heard what it said. It was right. You did help it. No. I must endure. Let me know if I can help. You already have. All that remains now is them. Thank you. We would not have risked the summoning, but the roads are too dangerous to travel unprotected. You! Tortured and killed my friend. We didn't know it was just the spirit. The, the book said it could help us. Uh. Oh, this is a this is a tough this is a tough situation. I think it's annoying how clueless these mages were, clueless and careless. And I think what's really interesting is. For me, personally, as a player, if I was playing Dragon Age Origins right now or Dragon Age 2, I'd have a much different take on all of this. I'd have a completely different um, 
stance on this. Especially with Dragon Age 2, because this gives so much more information retroactively to Dragon Age 2 about demons. And especially it keeps um, bringing back the sort of the Meryl situation with, with the demon. They've definitely given you a whole new perspective on spirits and demons because it could well be that Meryl was being helped by a spirit and it became a demon when the Keeper interfered with it and labelled it as such. And it's such an interesting way to think about Dragon Age 2, uh, especially with that quest line. And I think if we were having a quest like this during Dragon Age 2, um, we'd probably be a lot more sympathetic towards the, the mages and less so towards Solus's stance here. And it's like... It's, I still don't want him to necessarily kill them. A good old bonking on the head will do, but also at the same time... Oh. Like, I understand his anger. But then this is the same thing. What did we do with, with Cole, you know? We didn't let Cole kill either. We didn't let Leliana kill either, because Leliana, all the way at the start of the game, was going to kill that, uh, that scout. I think that this can be a learning opportunity for mages, where they just literally didn't know, because they've been given, you know, that Chantry propaganda, they've been given that sort of same rhetoric that gets repeated in circles all the time, that it's like, demons are demons, spirits are spirits, they don't coalesce. These mages have the same mentality that I had uh, before I was given more sort of insight. Solus. Never again. I need some time alone. I will meet you back at Skyhold. Whoa! That's so interesting. Speak to Solus. Um, that's not something that I expected to happen. Um, actually having a party member, um, leave. Oops. Having a party member actually leave because of what happened. Well, let's go back to Skyhold. Let's go and talk to him. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. It just feels wrong to just, like, let them kill, you know? I just feel like the mages were absolutely clueless. Inquisitor. Oh, he went for a walk. How are you, Solus? It hurts. It always does. But I will survive. Thank you for coming back. You were a true friend. You did everything you could to help. I could hardly abandon you now. The next time you have to mourn, you don't need to be alone. It's been so long since I could trust someone. I know. I'll work on it. And thank you. I think that really ties into the fact that when we were in the nightmare, we saw that uh, I think Solus's fear at that at that gravestone was was like being alone, dying alone. Like he just, it seems that he's been on his own for a really long time, considering um, that he doesn't belong to a clan or a, a people. And we are just we're nurturing him. We're rubbing his shiny head, and we're saying, Worship. "It's okay, Solus." When I look into your shiny head, I see myself in you. Literally. Inquisitor, I was... Do you have a moment? Eh, hey, we're in my quarters. What were you like? Before the anchor? Has it affected you? Changed you in any way? Your mind? 
your morals, your spirit. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. I don't believe so. Ah. Why do you ask? You show a wisdom I have not seen since... since my deepest journeys into the ancient memories of the Fade. You are not what I expected. <laughs> okay. I'm not like other girls. Sorry to disappoint. It's not disappointing, it's... Most people are predictable. You have shown subtlety in your actions. A wisdom that goes against everything I expected. If the Dalish could raise someone with a spirit like yours, have I misjudged them? Mm. That is that is interesting, because he's not Dalish. Interesting perspective. Yes. I don't hold the Dalish up as perfect, but we have something worth honoring. A memory of the ancient ways. Perhaps that is it. I suppose it must be. Most people act with so little understanding of the world, but not you. So what does this mean, Solus? It means I have not forgotten the kiss. <laughs> Lover boy's got a crush. Lover boy's got a crush because we're like a smart, wise elf lady. Good. Rub the head while you're at it. I feel like it increases the sensitivity. Don't go. It would be kinder in the long run, but losing you would. Arlath Mavanan. What did you just say to me? Ooh. How beautiful is this music? And then it's gone. <gasps> um, I hope, you, I hope you didn't see my canard. <laughs> um, Solus has uh, opted to not comment on my choice of uh, bedroom decor. And, uh, and the couch. And Cole sits on that chair and he watches. Okay. Uh, I've got a point to spend. I might dive into... Useful aura. Do that. Interesting. I didn't. I didn't want to say let it go. And maybe it's the. It's definitely my. It's funny because I have such a deep uh, love and appreciation for the Elven lore that it, it's just. It's hard to turn away from the Mega Mind. You know. That's what I'm. That's what I'm feeling. I do be feeling it. I've got to do it. All right, we've got to do some work down here for sure. You were there. I have to know what it was like. The colors, the smells, the magic. I'm sorry. It's just so exciting. You went into the fade. <clears throat> if you have time, Inquisitor, do tell. You seemed excited that I fell into the fade at Adamant. Excited? Spring gets me excited. This is a wonder. It's probably hard to relate, but dwarves don't dream. So I can't even guess what it's like. I can't even understand what dreams are. But you were there. And came back. Can I take a sample? A sample? Oh, that sounded sinister. I meant, can I cut a little piece off of you and do things to it? That didn't sound better, did it? <laughs> oh my god. You'll have a full report of everything I saw. Will that do? It's a start. I'm sorry, it's just... This is exciting. It all is. Hmm. Your people cleaned you up after your fall. 
I wonder if anything is left. So much to think about. Ooh, the Arcanist and the Fade operation available now. Okay. All right, time for me to modify some stuff. So I'll probably mess around with this. This is more playing around in menus and then we will get back out there. Okay, we've done some inventory management. That's all done and dusted. Cleaned out my inventory and time has passed. Uh, I took a break. So that has allowed the war table operations to be completed we can check in with everybody. So let's have a look at how things went. Break the Venatory hold on Wycombe. Nightingale, the Tevinter advisor, has been eliminated. Documents on his person prove that he was indeed Venatory and also shed some light on the mysterious illness plaguing the humans of Wycombe. The Venatory planted red lyrium in the wells from which the humans drink, evidently testing whether the entire city could be transformed into soldiers like the Red Templars. I took the liberty of destroying the red lyrium in the wells as it was impossible to wait for an answer from you in Skyhold. This has ended the direct threat along with the death of the Venatory advisor. However, tensions remain high and I suspect that the residents' withdrawal from the Red Lyrium will only exacerbate the situation. Jester, okay. Restore order has appeared. The Isle's invitation, Ambassador, I cannot thank you enough for inviting me to act as the Inquisition's champion at the Grand Melee. You will be glad to hear I did not disgrace you. I placed a respectable tenth. Although I did not manage to win us either title or lands, I did secure several trade agreements with the Banon for the Inquisition. I thought that might please you more than a dank castle. Nice. And how could you? The captain sent back sketches of the walls. Our experts say they look elven. Interesting. Does Corypheus send scholars to find something the elves buried? Or something buried with them? Hmm. I cannot say we have peace, but we have calm. Our representatives spoke with the protesting mages and reassured them of how gravely you approached the use of tranquility. I suspect that the only reason they were successfully reasoned with is that you yourself are a mage. They may wonder how one of their own could do that to another mage, but on some level they accept that it was at least one of their own. Okay, there you go. Um, we may as well restore order in Wycombe. Ambassador Montillier, although matters in Wycombe seem better than before, with the sudden departure of Duke Antoine's Tevinter advisor, I confess that the nobles are now in quite a state. They are very passionate in their opinions and act like a drunkard shaking in want of his spirits. I've heard talk of the nobles putting their cares aside and indulging in some youthful sport. The local townsfolk are likely not up to such competition, and I fear the presence of our Inquisition soldiers might lead to silliness on all sides. Were the, were the Dalish outside Wycombe invited to join in, perhaps by a clever jester, the match might be more sporting. Uh, so, presence of Inquisition soldiers, bad. Presence of clever jester, the name of Leliana's spy, yes. <laughs> Josephine's diplomat warned against a large force. Let me get the Dalish into the city as she suggested. They can take the nobles by surprise. Josephine's diplomat makes it clear that the nobles have gone mad. They will kill the Inquisitor's clan unless we send forces to quell them. Hmm. They will... Okay. Hmm. Send, send a force to fight people to prevent losses of our clan or get the Dalish into the city and they can take the nobles by surprise. They warned against a large force. If it was, if we were warned against a large force, Inquisitor. we'll take Leliana on that one. Um, the Arcanist and the Fade. A report in Arcanus Dagna's hand, an official request made officially. The Inquisitor has suffered exposure to the tears, to, sorry, to the tears of the Veil and the energy of the Fade. To properly help her endure these forces, I need to understand them. I need samples, I need remnants, I need to see. If it pleases, I request the resources for a grand experiment to peer through the Veil or as far as I can. It's an expensive investment, I know, but it's necessary and it's only fair. I need to see. I wrote that twice. It's important to me. 
Arcanus Dagna. Sketched below, flowers and fire. She'll have what she needs. I expect it would be difficult to keep it from her. I'll have the battlefield scoured for samples. That's as close as I would dare with her. And remnants are easy enough. I shall poll the powers we have established in your wake. Um, I guess we can take all the powers we have established. Battlefield scoured for samples. Want to do Josephine? Do that. Um, deploying Reese. The death of good Sir Ruth. Red Jenny. Um, Cullen's available, so... Let's see. Maybe protecting Valgamort from Darkspawn. Your Worship, my town of Valgamord has been besieged by Darkspawn. I cannot fathom where the loathsome beasts have come from, but I beg the Inquisition for assistance. My own humble forces have already been dispatched to help in your own noble efforts, leaving my people ill-equipped against this savage host. Word of your redemption of the Grey Wardens has already spread far. Please, if you can spare them, Valgamord lives or dies by your word. It is odd to see a town threatened by Darkspawn. I suggest we investigate before committing forces. Marquise has other allies. She can call upon them and we can save the Wardens for a true emergency. And the Grey Wardens are the best in the world against Darkspawn. This is their time to shine. This is an interesting um, perspective, though. It is odd to see a town threatened by Darkspawn and to investigate. But if we investigate before committing forces, it could be too late. What if it's a trap? The Grey Ones are the best in the world. Um, Inquisitor. We will send the Grey Wardens to Valgamord, and we will see what happens. And that, my friends, will bring this episode of Dragon Age Inquisition to a close. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, next time, we'll head back out into some other locations in the wild. But we've had a very good episode here, some good lore. Good character interaction, as usual, getting very, very excited about the the elvish happenings and goings on right now. So excited to dive into that further. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.